Hello and welcome. My name is Kata and I am talking today about a mindful approach to dating and to relationships, um, to intimacy as well. Uh, so before I get into the five steps, um, the five mindful steps in terms of how to approach a intimate or dating relationship, I would like to get into talking about some statistics that I did a little research on and found online. Uh, I researched both US and Canada to see what the dating stats were like. However, the numbers were kind of similar for the two countries. So I kind of just snowballed them into one. And, um, um, and I think a lot of the numbers do kind of emerge from the US, but nonetheless, I think it's important. So number one, 44% of U.S. adult population is single. 44% is a huge number. That's like half the population. And I found that number to be very, very close um, with Canada. So half the population, both in Canada and the U.S., is single. That's crazy when you think about it. Oh, a bunch of lonely people. <laughs> number two. Uh, the average amount of time it takes to make a first impression on a man is 15 minutes. The average amount of time it takes to make an impression on a woman it is 60 minutes. So that I found interesting. It's quite a big difference. So for women, it takes about an hour, I think, before we kind of get an assessment of that individual. Or for a guy, 15 minutes is pretty sufficient to kind of get a good read, I guess. Um, number three, 12 there's a 12% chance of the guy calling. Oh, okay, sorry. So there's a 12% chance of the guy calling you after the first date if he hasn't called within 24 hours. This means that you actually only have 12% chance of getting called if he did not call you back in the first 24 hours. This is a statistic. That kind of blew my mind too. It's like, wow. If, so if a guy's not going to call in the first 24 hours, then he's probably not going to call. But there is a 12% chance that he will. Keep that in mind. Number four, 53% of people have dated more than one person simultaneously. That does not surprise me. This is something that I've heard of a lot of people doing. It's not something that I ever really did. Um, I was never, never really into that. And and quite frankly, I, I can't even, like, I just don't have that much energy to spread around. <laughs> like, if I'm going to meet somebody, then I'm going to take my time to, just to meet that one person, try to get to know them um, before it proceeds any further, right? And I'm going to try and do that with more than one? Oh, hell no. But 53% of people decided, yes, that is hell yes, <laughs> something that they're going to do and have dated more than one person simultaneously, which is a little bit cringeworthy. 53%, it's a big number. Number five, 33% of women have sex on the first online dating encounter. And that kind of saddened me. I was like, whoa, 33% of women. It's a, it's a big number when you think about it, because we're talking about millions, right? Um, in terms of total population for the country, 33% of women will have sex after their first encounter meeting somebody online that's crazy that's so crazy so that leads me right into my five steps of mindful dating um because again once i did this research and once i looked at the stats i was kind of blown away to be honest i was very very surprised um it's certainly an issue that i've talked with clients about, um, especially the younger generations, like uh, the, the 20s, anyone in their 20s currently, um, and even teen, unfortunately, I think we're finding people are having sex younger and younger nowadays. But, um, you know, it's just a part of society. This is how things have been built up. And so because of that, I think it's very important that we talk about these five steps. So the very first one, because you want to approach Ultimately, I think every intimate situation or dating situation from, from a place of comfort and from a place of knowing who you are already. And I think it's important that we approach it from, from like a non-emotional perspective. Like, yes, it's very, very exciting when we first meet someone and 
especially if we start dating them, especially if we really like them and we're very attracted to them, lots of chemistry, then I get it. You know, people want to get straight to the good stuff, but it's not really serving for us. It really isn't. And I will get into some of the reasons as to why. So step one is take your time to get to know the person. I think it's so important that we communicate much, much more and really talk and really express our feelings. I think it's something that has been missing in society. A lot of people are really afraid to express how they truly feel in any given situation. And I'm not saying like, you know, spew out I love you on the first date because that would be weird. But just simply... So just simply figure out if you really vibe with them. You know, I think that's that's the first thing. And, and sometimes we can vibe with an individual like right off the bat. And then after a couple of dates, you might find that, oh, maybe not so much, you know, and maybe even after multiple dates, it might even take months before you figure that out, that that you're actually not really vibing with that individual because it takes time, right? You got to get to know the person. And so this is why I think getting to know somebody, having conversations, it doesn't have to be overly deep but having some definitely honest conversations in terms of what people's expectations are what they're looking for uh is really really important especially right in the beginning right right when you first meet somebody and especially if you're meeting them with that intention like a romantic intention um pay attention to see if there's anything that feels off about them when you're interacting with them you know is is there a funny vibe you get or just a weird feeling or do you have any sense that maybe they're hiding something um maybe they're not honest about something like pay attention to those i find we can intuitively pick up on those feelings but it has to be something that you're aware of first and paying attention to um you know are you asking them lots of questions uh are they asking you lots of questions these are things to pay attention to um step two pay attention to red flags red flags are not just pretty decorations they are certainly there for our awareness for our learning um they're there to show us something that perhaps we may not be fully picking up with all our senses um Red flags are definitely, again, accompanied by a feeling. It's a, There's an intuitive feeling within you that something is just a little bit off about that person or about what they just said or what they just did or whatever. Um, and for that reason, I think it's very important that we address the red flags. So when something comes up, say you start dating somebody, you really like them, they're super cool, a nice person, you're attracted to them, there's chemistry, but there's just something that feels off or like, couple of red flags start going up you know they do things that you're just like whoa what was that or or they say something that made you feel uncomfortable or that just was rude or um or maybe they're very dismissive or whatever pay attention to those those are all red flags and they speak of the character of that person and of that individual um you know how we act says so much more about us than what we say you can say a lot of great things, but how you act ultimately is what builds your character. It's what makes your character. Um, so addressing the red flags, talk about the concerns um, and don't ignore it. Don't ignore it uh, and don't hope that it will go away because that's a mistake I ran into a long, long time ago when I was much younger, my 20s. And, you know, and, and I was dating somebody and it was like new and fresh and then some red flags started to go up and I was just like, oh no, that's fine, yeah. You know, it just, there was a complete like dismissiveness about it. it. I was like, now looking back, I'm completely shocked at myself of how unaware I was. However, at the same time, it's so awesome to know how much I've grown, how much I've learned and how much more aware I am when it comes to relationships. So everything I'm sharing is like, it's, I'm sharing this because I have gone through some of these things and I have experienced some of these things and it's not fun. If you have awareness, if you have, you know, this video that like that I didn't see when I was in my twenties or I didn't watch videos then, YouTube wasn't, wasn't really a thing then. I don't even think it existed actually. But because we didn't have those tools when I was younger, I didn't 
I didn't know. You just kind of did whatever, right? So, but now we don't have to, to be that way. We have so much knowledge available to us, so much information available to us, so much experience available to us through other people that we have such, it's such a gift. And I think we need to use it as a tool and really try to learn every day, just a little bit, a little bit of something that helps to expand your awareness so that you're, you know, not so blinders on kind of view of the world, right? It's important. Um, so don't ignore the red flags. They're not going to go away. Um, and uh, yeah, and you can't hope it away either. Sorry, just uh, peeking at my notes here. Step number three is very important. Become friends before you become lovers. I think that is so important. And from the thousands of people that I've spoken to um, throughout my career, I've noticed that it's always it's always the couples that um, it's always the couples that last that, that became friends first. So they first started out their their relationship as a friendship. Um, and then they built on that friendship. They established like a foundation first and figured each other out first. Uh, and because they did all of that first, there was already a foundation there. There was something solid, something supportive that was there to, to build a relationship on. Um, in some cases, you know, cause I've seen that too, uh, the opposite end of the spectrum where, where people just meet and it's like love at first sight and it's like, they just hit it off right from the get-go and and that's awesome that's awesome but that's not the norm right that's not the the average kind of reality that most people experience it's the opposite it's you know you, you they say what you kiss a bunch of frogs before you <laughs> before you kiss your prince or find your prince or whatever so becoming friends before becoming lovers i think is the foundation to building a lasting relationship for sure. I've also learned that. Um, step four, think before you smooch. And this is going to be a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm going to talk about it because I don't really hear anybody talking about this, to be honest, all throughout the internet, because I look at a lot of different types of YouTube videos. I, I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly tr absorbing information and, and, and trying to expand what I know and um, how I can help others, you know, that's something I'm constantly trying to expand. And, and this is something that it's come up over and over and I kept pushing it aside. And I was like, no, I'm not going to talk about that. No, I'm not going to talk about that. But today is the day and I am going to talk about it. Kissing is something that I think we forget comes with consequences. To be honest, I don't even think most people think about consequences when it comes to kissing. Um, we forget that when we exchange saliva, there are several things that happen in the body. Okay. So first of all, I did a little research once again <laughs> to really make sure I had my facts straight. Um, but saliva contains epithelial cells, which are the inner lining of the mouth. Um, and epithelial cells contain DNA. So every single time that you lay your beautiful lips on somebody, else's lips and you exchange saliva in that moment you are exchanging genetic material on top of the genetic material you are also um, exchanging viruses bacteria fungi parasites uh, candida yeast potentially thrush potentially hpv or herpes simplex gingivitis etc etc so I'm mentioning this because once again, I don't think people really think about this or people talk about this. That's gross. That's just really, really gross. <laughs> so I think we need to stop kissing people all over the place and start to realize that this can carry a lot of stuff. This is like the entry into your body. Okay. So it's going to have all kinds of things in there that you may not want from somebody else. Um, be mindful of that. It's, you know, mono is not the only kissing disease as they call it. There are so many things that you can catch from somebody through a simple kiss. Um, so for that reason, the number one thing I'm going to suggest 
is to make sure you have amazing oral hygiene, especially if you're a single person, especially if you're dating. Um, but I mean, I mean, I, I know in general, everybody should have good oral hygiene, but like really seriously, like disinfect your mouth. Okay. <laughs> like not just, and I know you can't really disinfect it. I'm not saying drink bleach. Um, but really make sure that you take care of your, your oral hygiene and like you keep your mouth clean. And I recently discovered it's not just the mouth, it's actually the throat as well that we need to clean out um, on a regular basis. And you can do this with uh, salt water gargling or um, peppermint oil and water gargling or um, using other methods. Actually, hydrogen peroxide is amazing. A little bit of uh, hydrogen peroxide also mixed in water is amazing to gargle with. So I think gargling on a daily basis is going to be extremely important, especially if you're someone that has already kissed a bunch of frogs and you still plan on kissing some more. <laughs> and definitely, definitely be mindful of what's happening um, in your mouth, you know, and be mindful that other people may not have good oral hygiene, you know, and you could be the cleanest, fresh breath, beautiful teeth, white, all that stuff and kiss somebody that doesn't have those things or isn't as adamant about their oral health care um, or is somebody that perhaps you know was pretty reckless before with their body and maybe slept around a lot and kissed a lot and you know did god knows what else so it's please be mindful that the kissing part is really really important it super grosses me out when i hear about people like meeting somebody and like, oh yeah, we just met and then we tell him made out. And I'm like, really? Like, you don't even know him. You don't know where that mouth has been, you know? <laughs> so maybe it's just me and I'm super squeamish. I don't know, but I think it's important to um, maintain hygiene. And I think it's very important for us to be aware that you can catch a lot of shit kissing. So just be mindful of that. And don't just go kissing anybody and everybody don't forget that the DNA of that person is in your body and it's in your body pretty much for life. Like, I don't think it ever really leaves. It just becomes a part of you. That's what happens. So, so, and, and with the relation to this and or, uh, oral hygiene and all of that, I also want to mention here is to be mindful of also not to share drinks and, and meals. Um, you know, sharing a fork or sharing a drink, drinking out of the same cup or out of the same straw or whatever. That too. They put their mouth on and guess what? Whatever they got going on in their body, not just in their mouth, but in their body is now coming into your body as well. So just be mindful of that. I know a lot of people don't pay attention to this. So that's why I really wanted to reiterate it. And step number five, which of course is a beautiful ending to what I was just saying is love and respect your body temple, which is exactly what the kissing has to do with as well. You don't just kiss whoever and anyone because you're horny or because you know, you haven't been laid in forever. Yeah, I know. And trust me, I get it. It can be very difficult if you haven't been sexually active in a long time or if you just haven't been interacting with people in a long time, you haven't been physical or intimate in a long time. Yes, it can be extremely trying and it can certainly test your willpower. However, at the end of the day, what is more important, you know, a five minute makeout session or with potential repercussions or or you just kind of holding your own until you know for sure that you want to kiss that person, that you want to be intimate with them, that you want to share DNA with them. You need to be certain of that. And I think we're a little bit reckless in society today. We, I see this in movies all the time. Like everybody's kissing everybody and we think nothing of it. Like I, I don't like how we normalize this, how we make it like it's totally normal that everybody's just sleeping with everybody and kissing everybody. It's not normal. And that's not how we used to do things. You know, we had standards and people had a way, there was a way and a method to courting. It wasn't just, hey, you're hot, let's hop in a sack. That's not, <laughs> that's not how it was done. And I, for one, I know I'm young, but I would love to bring that back, to bring back that, that respect for self again, where people, where it matters, you know, it matters whether you sleep around with a bunch of people or don't, like it matters. I, I think we need to bring those values back because these are ultimately personal values that we're missing in society and we're missing it because the media constantly shows us movies and all kinds of shows 
constantly show us that you can literally kiss and hug and have sex with anybody with zero consequences. And that's a lie. That's an absolute lie. So be aware of that lie and really think for a moment, you know, is this something that I really truly want to do or get myself into? Like, am I really wanting to commit to this person? Am I really willing to go to that next level with them? Or is just, it's just a fling. It's just a whatever. It's just physical pleasure and nothing more, right? That's what you've got to think about because Listen, at the end of the day, everybody has two hands. So if you got to take care of yourself to get through, then that's what you do instead of sleeping with a whole bunch of random people, right? Um, it's just we're making our, our own society more dirty is the way I see it. Um, we're like kind of contaminating each other constantly by having this type of very promiscuous behavior and and it's not everybody, but it is, I've heard some stories, man. It's like today's younger generations are in for it. And I think they need to hear this message that what they see out there is not truth and it's not reality. Um, and discernment is the only thing that will save you. You have to be wise enough, um, aware enough and heart centered enough to know what is good for you and what's not good for you. And I think deep down we all do. We all know because we all have intuition and we get feelings about whether we should do something or not. Um, the question is, though, do you pay attention to it? So, you know, keep it clean, especially if you're dating. You know, just love and respect your body and keep it clean. Try to stay healthy. Have really, really good oral hygiene. And don't sleep around and don't make out with 20 million people because it's gross, you know? <laughs> so... That's my tip for you today. Um, and then the very, very last thing about the love and respecting the body temple. If you truly are ready to connect with somebody, like you genuinely want to be in a relationship and you're ready to commit, you're ready to, to really go that next step with that individual, then set or just with anyone, like you're looking for that, set an intention to connect and to connect with the soul that is truly for your highest good and you for them. I think you can't go wrong. If you just set that intention and, and say to the universe out loud, you know, I'm, I'm looking for that, that soul connection, that person that truly is beneficial for my life and I for theirs. That intention will it will start, it will like put you on this path of aligning to a clear heart, a clear mind. One that is not contaminated with greed about the physicality. One that is not ego dominated because the ego just wants pleasure. But the soul wants fulfillment. So I will leave you with that. And I hope this was helpful. Um, hopefully it, uh, gives some single people something to think about and, and, uh, hopefully it'll motivate you to approach relationships and dating and intimacy with more discernment, with more awareness. Um, it's not to say you can't have fun. Absolutely have fun, but just be mindful of who you share body fluids with. <laughs> so I will leave you with that. Take care, guys. I love you all. I hope you um, take care of yourselves, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.